Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Elite Chef Masterclasses. My name is Terry Port, and today you're going to be learning about how to sear mushrooms properly using these ingredients that I have here. Stick around. All right, welcome back, folks. We've got a plethora of mushrooms here, a couple of herbs, and of course, a couple of containers of garlic that I've got. Uh, one being my roasted garlic that I love so much, or garlic confit, and some fresh garlic, and a few different types of mushrooms here. Um, I've got uh, baby portobellos, or uh, um, uh, brown mushrooms, I've got white button mushrooms, I've got shimiji mushrooms, both white and brown, shiitake, some fresh thyme, parsley, and of course, onions, and some white wine. Now, at the beginning intro, I said seared mushrooms, and I want to make sure I differentiate that from just sautéed mushrooms, which is what we commonly say. The reason for that is I want to get people out of the mindset of the sauté, that tossing constantly and really what ends up happening is you're diffusing the heat in the pan by doing that. Uh, I say seared mushrooms because I, I kind of treat them like a steak. Once we get them in, we're going to leave them in and let them brown. That brown, just like on a steak, adds flavor and that's really 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 important so let me get these all prepped up and then we're going to move over there to the stove top and get these done welcome back ladies and gentlemen I want to quickly talk about a good friend of mine chef john placco who's been supplying me with these amazing containers uh, he's got a great company called Powder for Texture, uh, where he supplies chefs or anybody really uh, uh, with these containers. Uh, he's got modern equipment, something, the things like um, sodium alginate, calcium chloride, some of the new modern uh, uh, textural uh, ingredients there uh, to help the modern pantry. Uh, but any type of equipment that uh, uh, assists in that, do give him a shout. Powder for Texture, Chef John Placco. All right, so now we're gonna get into these seared mushrooms and I've got my pan heating up. I'm using vegetable oil. I will be adding butter at the end, but I'm using vegetable oil because it's got a high smoke point. I wanna sear these mushrooms. Now my pan is pretty hot. I'm willing to bet this is gonna smoke pretty quickly. Do be mindful to get a good fair amount in there. In fact, I'm gonna add a little bit more because the mushrooms are like a sponge. They'll soak up a lot of that, all right? Now also important, don't overcrowd the pan. I've got my pan on high heat. It's been on for a couple of minutes and I can already see it's starting to smoke a little bit. Now, overcrowding the pan. This can be bad because what happens is the steam coming off of the mushrooms, if it's overcrowded, is gonna condense on the mushrooms beside it and that water drips back down rather than evaporating away and we are no longer searing, but now because the water's remaining in the pan, it's going to diffuse the temperature and they're just going to kind of stew away. So we do want to add just enough mushrooms and you can see that sizzle right away. All right, we want to add just enough mushrooms to have them continue to sear. So you can see here, just a quick shake at the beginning and that's it. This is going to be a test of your patience to refrain from playing it. Oh, look at me, I'm chef. Leave them alone. Let them do their thing. Let them brown, let them sear. All right, one of the things that I am gonna do, all right, I'm not gonna put a lid on top, but I do have um, a one of these guys here to help prevent the spinning and spattering. I'm gonna get my fan on, which is gonna cause me to try and have to yell. These are gonna brown and sear for probably a good two, three minutes, and then we'll be back. I've got the mushrooms searing. It's been probably two, three minutes. Let's have a look, all right? You can see right around the edges there that we're starting to turn brown. So what I am gonna do, I'm gonna put that splatter guard down for a quick second, toss them around, okay? And now, let them sear again. Let's take a look at them again. We got some nice browning. I'm gonna make sure I don't hurt myself here. Get these tossed up. Now we can see multiple sides. I've got some nice browning going on. All right. Now, this is why it's important to have our mise en place, all of our prep ready to go. Because as soon as I add some of these ingredients, in particular the fresh garlic, 
in this high heat environment, it's going to cook really fast. So I need to make sure I've got things like my white wine or any liquids ready to go to diffuse the heat in the pan quickly once they start turning brown. All right, so I'm going to get my diced onions in there. I'm going to start with those rather than uh, the garlic. I see people adding in garlic at the beginning. Well, the garlic's the smallest thing. What's going to happen by the time you even get those mushrooms in? They're going to be burnt. All right? Start with the largest item being the mushrooms, then the next smallest, and then the smallest after that. Mushrooms, onions, garlic. Now we're going to get in my garlic. All right? We're going to let that cook up for just maybe 30 seconds to a minute. I'm just keeping an eye on the garlic constantly to see what stage it's at. Once I see that the garlic starts turning brown, that's when I'm going to diffuse the heat with my white wine and turn the temperature down to let that simmer up. Now, just before my garlic turns, I'm going to hit it with the fresh chopped thyme. Garlic is starting to go just a little bit brown, a little bit more. All right, so now, my white wine is going to go in. This is going to spit and spatter a little bit. Turn my heat down. I let that simmer up. All right, we're back. I got the uh, white wine reduced out. Quickly now, I'm just going to switch over. I've got a little strainer here. Get a lot of that excess oil out. All right. Beautiful. That's just oil. There's nothing separated out of that. All right. Mushrooms back in the pan. Beautiful. Shut my heat off completely. This is going to cool down. If I were to get my butter in here now, the heat, residual heat in the pan, would cause the butter to go farther than I want it to go and split and become greasy. All right. Monte au beurre is, is a, a mountain with butter, finishing with butter, but the key is, and a lot of young cooks don't understand this, is that the butter needs to remain emulsified, creamy. Because if you just Monte au beurre and your pan's still smoking hot, all you're gonna do is serve somebody some greasy whatever it is, in this case, mushrooms. All right, welcome back, everybody. Let's finish these mushrooms off. They've cooled down for a minute or two now. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, I've got my garlic confit here. I'm gonna get that into the pan. I could have pureed it ahead of time, but I've got that there. I'm just gonna give that a quick smash. Next, we're gonna get in the parsley chiffonade and my butter monte au beurre at the end, okay? Don't be shy, get a good amount in there, all right? Now, the trick here is to keep moving everything so that butter stays creamy. All right, last few things I'm gonna add. Some black pepper, of course, as long with some salt, okay? I'm gonna keep moving this around, make sure that butter stays emulsified, and when we back, I'm gonna give this a taste up and uh, let you know how it turned out. All right, welcome back, everybody. I've been shaking this around for the past minute or so, making sure that, as you can see, that butter stays nice and creamy. All right, does everybody see that? Okay, so now, um, if your pan was too hot, it's split. That's okay, we got a workaround, okay? Quick little bonus tip right here. You pull that off the heat, it's cooling down, and you found you've split it. What you can do to pull it back is a little splash of cold water. Obviously, your heat was high, so your, your temperature is going to be okay. A little splash of cold water, toss, 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 toss. That will come back into a creamy texture. That works with... Uh, uh, glazed carrots, beets, sautéed, seared mushrooms, uh, what have you. A little splash of cold water will bring back a, uh, a Monte au beurre correctly. All right? I'm going to give these a taste because I love seared mushrooms. Oh, my God. That is absolutely beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, please give this a try. You can use this on a whole host of different things. One of my favorites that I do with my catering company a lot, excuse me, is a um, mushroom truffle flatbread or pizza. These can also be pureed with a bechamel uh, to make a cream of mushroom soup. Um, put this as a side dish for a beef tenderloin dish or any steak, a, a steak topper. Um, they're the li your 
limitless as far as what you can do with it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Terry Port of Elite Chef Masterclasses, and you just learned how to sear mushrooms properly. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.